looked easy. What's your secret? All right, actually it was fascinating just watching you simply walk somewhere. Thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm like, do people expect you to like show up and you know, arrive at a place such as this? Uh, definitely, absolutely. Um, it's a pretty common misconception that if you do parkour, you just parkour everywhere. Um, <laughs> but it's not like that. The, the jumping and the running um, is not even the majority of the discipline. Uh, there's, there's so much more to it. Um, and when you live it, you have a time and place for running and jumping and a time for walking and, and talking. I mean, imagine <laughs> Bruce Wayne flipping onto the stage. That's not really what he would Yes. Well, astounding. And, like, is Seattle a, a friendly to parkour city? Uh, absolutely. Actually, we've, um, we being uh, Parkour Visions, we're, we're a group, and we've made quite a the positive relationship with the city um, after enough years of being in the parks. But also there's a lot of diversity. Uh, you have the, the smooth organic trees at Volunteer Park and the rusted remnants of industry at Gasworks Park and of course the brutal, abrasive <laughs> playground that is Freeway Park. So it's, it's a good place to jump. <laughs> Be careful. Okay. <laughs> um, how have your uh, parkour skills uh, played out or ha come in handy with just day-to-day -day living? Yeah, um, one of the original ideas behind parkour, the original philosophy is be strong to be useful. It's not just for you, it's not for the sake of entertainment um, or, or gaining um, attention. <laughs> um, it is to train oneself to do better. So I've, I mean, I've carried groceries for people, I've pushed broken down cars, I've crawled into small smarmy spaces to retrieve keys and phones and ID cards. Um, but yeah, one of the, uh, the one that stands out the most actually was when I first started training, um, only a few months actually. I had been living in Ballard and I had been commuting to the Soto for my job. So I just get on the bus in the metro one day, and those of you who ride the metro know there's the, the back door and the seats that face the back door. So I sit down in the seat, and I carry on with my business, and uh, as usual, I'm watching everybody get on the bus, and uh, two very jovial, very drunk, elderly folk get on um, down in Ballard, just holding on to each other the whole, whole meal deal, middle of the day. So I, okay, there you go. Um, a male and a female. And partway down the line, he gets off, and she continues riding. And we get down to Pioneer Square, and this was, I was already naturally doing this, um, you know, sitting in the seat facing the doors. You can also see the windows of the storefront, and you can see the reflections of what's happening up the street and down the street and just kind of what's going on. So I'm watching this, this reflection, and the, the woman, um, again, elderly and actually quite frail, very small, stumbles her way off the bus and then stumbles out of sight, completely out of sight. I couldn't see her in the reflection. I couldn't see her from where I was sitting. I see one man in the reflection, like reaching out with wide eyes. Uh, and in that moment, I recognized that. I checked the mirror to the bus driver in the front of the bus. He didn't see it, and so I, so I act. I, I move, I step out the bus. I see she, uh, <clears throat> she was under the wheel of the bus, the, the double wheels, just just almost like she was supposed to be there, just kind of snuggled in. <laughs> and so I nab her up, and she's incredibly light. I throw her to this guy whose arms are outstretched, like, what is going on? And I get back on the bus, and this all happens in the time. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it all happened, uh, the bus, did, and then they closed, and that was as much. So I'm sitting, looking around, did anyone see that? The driver, no. Anybody, no. <laughs> No, um, and you know, it wasn't, you know, I didn't jump anywhere, I didn't run anywhere, but for me, that is a means to an end, and the end is to be strong, to be useful, is to trust my response and be willing to act and make the decision when I have to make the decision, and then go, be strong, to be useful. So. <laughs> Well, delightful meeting you. Thank you so much. Brandy Laird.